Hi and welcome to Velo GPS. In this video we're going to show you how to set up the data screens on your Garmin Edge Explore. So to start with we need to select the options icon in the bottom left, followed by ride settings, and then after ride settings we select data screens. We can see here that we have three screens that we can choose from. So screen one, which is a data screen, the map screen and the elevation screen. You can also add new screens and we'll come on to that at a later stage. So just selecting screen one now, we can go through setting up the data screens and you can see that there's one field selected at the moment, but we're going to choose the option for layout and data fields. So we can now see again that we have one of, data, uh, one of 10 data fields selected and we can choose to add additional data fields from the categories um, described below. So we have popular, speed, distance, timer, elevation, and we can just scroll down, navigation, courses, general, cadence, heart rate. And then we have a few extra options at the bottom if you've got fancy e-bikes or posh electronic gears or indeed lights that you can connect to your Garmin. So we're just going to scroll back up to popular and then choose some data fields from that. So in addition to speed, we're going to select time, distance, time of day, average speed, and then we're going to quickly skip back and have a look at a couple of additional options. So probably from the navigation data fields, because the device is primarily a navigation device. So here we're going to select uh, distance to next. So that would be the distance to your next destination if you'd uploaded a route from Garmin Connect and we're navigating a course. Um, we're also going to choose location at next. So that will tell you what the uh, road name is, for example, at the next junction. So having done that, we can see that we now have seven of the 10 data fields selected. And that's a pretty good number. We quite like seven out of 10 because the screen doesn't get too cluttered. So we now hit the tick option and we can choose to have uh, the screen layout. So here we have four small fields at the bottom and then three larger fields at the top. Or we can change the layout. Again, four smaller ones at the bottom, two smaller at the top, and then one large data field in the middle, which is quite handy for key parameters such as speed. So once we're happy with the layout, and I think we'll stick with that one, we can then um, play around with the data fields and move the data field. So to do so, we just tap the data field as it's suggested. So here, I think what we might do is just change what we have down the bottom. So I tend to have my navigational instructions down the bottom. So we've tapped on uh, distance to next, I think it was. And then if we just tap on time, you can see that the two fields actually change locations. And again, we can do that with next point, tap on it and then swap it with average speed. Quite happy with time of day where it is, but uh, distance probably sits better up the top with average speed and then the two time parameters sat in the middle there. So again, once you're happy with that, you can select the tick at the bottom right hand side and we can see that we've updated that data page one to seven fields. Now, uh, you can have up to two data screens. Uh, so if you want to add another screen, we just hit the add new and then we can select data screen. There are other screens that can be added in, such as compass or group track. If you have uh, friends who also have uh, devices that can connect. Um, but we're going to select data screen for now. And we've got zero of 10 fields at the moment. So we're just going to pick a couple of random fields to add in. So we've gone for heart rate there and we'll just pick basic heart rate. Um, I think, what well, should we have a look at? Maybe something that's uh, DI2 related. So let's have rear gear and that's a graphic display of your rear gear. We'll just scroll back up and go within general and pick, what should we have? Sunset, just so we can see when the sun is due to set if we're chasing it uh, at the end of a ride and battery level as well. So we're happy with that. We can see here that we have four data fields of equal size, but again, you can choose the layout. Oops, we just hit the wrong uh, button there. You can choose the layout, and if we just tap on that, you can see that we now have two larger data fields and two smaller data fields at the top. So that looks pretty good. We're happy with that, but let's just show you that you can swap those around again as we did before. So we've tapped the data fields and we've moved heart rate into the middle, so it's a little bit more visible. 
So again, we're all good with that. Now, you can see here the order of the screens from top to bottom. So we've got screen one, map, elevation, screen two. So that's the order they'll appear in if you're swiping across whilst uh, undertaking a ride. But if you want to change the order so that screen one and two come together, you can just see that screen two selected and you can bump that up the running order. So we're now gonna have screen one, screen two, map and elevation through the running order. So we're now going to take a look at the map page and we can see here that we have the show map options. So here you can either have the map showing when you are navigating. So that would be when you have a course that you're following that you've uh, mapped out on something like Garmin Connect. Um, or you can have the map screen set so that it's always on. And we tend to prefer that setting because it means you can very quickly um, just skip to the map page and see where you are and where you may need to go. So we've next got the layout and data fields. Um, so you can choose to have no data fields, one or two displayed at the bottom of the screen, as you can see here. And to adjust those, you just do it in the same way that we did earlier. So we're happy with speed, but if we just tap on elevation, uh, we can show you that you can change that. And we're probably just gonna pick uh, distance as what we normally have there. So speed and distance, we're happy. Now, to go back the screen, you just need to click on this little back arrow here. It took us a little while to figure that one out and then back again. So next we have a look at the elevation page. And again, you can set up to two data fields at the bottom of the elevation page. So the elevation page effectively has a plot of elevation against distance. So elevation on the vertical axis and distance on the horizontal axis. And it effectively gives you a plot, if you're riding a course, a graphical display of what it looks like. So you can check out when you are you know, uh, up a climb and pace yourself up a climb accordingly. So again, you can just change the data fields. And I think we're just going <coughs> to change that to show elevation at the bottom right hand side there. So any of the data fields can be customized there. So we'll go back and... We'll perhaps just show you now. Now we're happy with the running order of the screens, what it actually looks like whilst you're undertaking a ride. So the running order there. So we just click on ride and you can see here that we have our seven data field page. And if we swipe across, uh, we move on to our four data fields, swipe across again and we come back to the map page. And then finally, it would be the elevation page. So just in a few short minutes, that's how to basically set up the data fields. But a neat little trick here, if you want to change a data field on the fly, all you need to do is tap and hold. And it used to be that if you tapped and hold on some of the other Garmin devices, it would then allow you to change it. But on the Explore at the moment, and we don't know whether this is a quirk of the latest software version, but you have to tap, hold, and then just slightly move your finger. Now, I've made a mistake there, the screen's actually slid across, but we'll try it again. If you tap, hold, and ever so slightly move, you'll see it highlighted and it's now gone to the data field categories. So you can choose to change that data field. I think we might have been, I'm not sure whether we were on the speed data field there. So let's just pick something completely random to put in instead. So I don't know, let's go for GPS signal strength. And now we can see we've got our GPS signal strength indicated uh, in that middle field. And just to show you again, we're going to change that back because uh, we want speed in there. That's the obvious parameter to have. So in a few short minutes, that's how to set up the data fields on your Garmin Edge Explore. If you've liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for plenty more videos to come. And if you have any comments, feel free to leave them below. Baby, baby.